Welcome to another KE Report webinar produced in conjunction with Focus Communications. My name is Corey Fleck, and I'm your host for this webinar, also your host over at the KE Report website, where we provide daily market commentary on the metals and markets, as well as interview a number of company CEOs and management teams in this webinar. We are happy to focus with Lithium Bank. Now, Lithium Bank is traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol LBNK and on the OTCQB under the symbol LBNKF and the Frankfurt Exchange HT9. On this webinar, I am joined by the CEO of Lithium Bank, Robert Suchuk, as well as the Executive Chairman, Paul Mitsayek, and the Chief Operating Officer, Kevin Peepgrass. Now, guys, I will get you to fire up your videos and your audio as the team will be walking us through the PEA that was just released for the Boardwalk Lithium Brine Project in Alberta. This PEA was released on May 25th, and there are some big numbers in this PEA, all headlined by a pre-tax NPV of US $2.7 billion. Now, this is one of the few PEAs out on a lithium brine project, so there's a lot for us to cover. The team is also happy to field any of your questions throughout this webinar. All you need to do is use either the chat or even better, the Q&A function within this webinar software. And I will interject some of these questions throughout the presentation. And at the end, we will have a Q&A period. So guys, thank you for joining us. Thanks for taking time to walk us through this recent PEA. I'll hand the floor over to you. Uh, thank you, Corey. Uh, I'll, I'm Paul Matisic. I'm the uh, executive chairman uh of the company and today we're going to do like 20 20 odd slides that will give you an overview of lithium bank the latest results our pea results uh give you a feel for what the company is uh, going to do in the next six to 12 months and how we create shareholder value uh for our shareholders and our new investors uh, so I've been involved, luckily enough, been involved in seven takeouts, uh, public takeouts in my career. And, you know, two of them being lithium, one being potash, all very uh, topical, uh, you know, uh, green type of projects. And what's been part of my success is, is being able to spot a good resource, to have a good team, have a good structure and a good plan. And, and I think that, you know, Lithium Bank is one of the one company that fits that criteria. And hopefully through this next presentation, you'll get a sense of what I see in this company. I'm ably joined by the co-founder, Rob Shuchuk, and, and his partner, Taylor McDonald, who were instrumental actually in, in picking up the real estate where these lithium brines are. I mean, they just, and they picked up sort of the largest tracts of ground in the, uh, the Dupro Formation in Saskatchewan and the Leduc Formation in Alberta. And it's probably one of the largest land holdings of the lithium brine uh, in, Nor in Canada. Uh, so Rob himself, he says, you know, he's a, a stock broker by training, but he's done a lot of work recently with Keras Capital and, and forming some wonderful companies, and uh, he's a joy to work with as a CEO. Well, I'm also ably helped by a great team. Uh, we have a great um, directorships uh, headed by Christopher Murray, Stephen Peepgrass, Gianni Kovic, and most recently, Katja Zotova. Uh, and at the management level, we've got uh, Kevin, who will be speaking a lot today about the uh, uh, PEA and Fer, our CEO, John Lamont, who's not here, but he's an excellent geologist and our main guy in the field. Uh, we got Corey as our marketing manager, and somehow my, my son got, got, got involved in the mix as a communications manager. So a great team. And, you know, so part of having a good team is also 
having a good structure to work with. And in the space of using about 42 million shares, we've been Clayton made a large landmass acquisitions in Alberta um, and in Saskatchewan. We've managed to do two, uh, do a resource and a PEA. Okay. And one other thing about a successful company, there's a lot of ownership by management and, and by the directors and close to 35% are owned by, by, by management and, and those. So what do you need to execute? You need a plan and a plan that adds value. And this is a great uh, slide on how we see that we're going to create value. So obviously you start from the, uh, the project acquisition point to a sampling to a hydrological study and you get to the PEA, the PEA, which is where we are today on that road to, to, to value generation. There are a couple of companies that are ahead of us and that's because they have gone down further down the road there. And those market caps, our market cap is around 50 to, I don't know, 55 million. Those market caps range from 200 to almost at one time a billion dollars. So it's the ability to actually execute on a plan on a program. And that's the next part for us. And, I, you know, one of it is actually demonstrating our a direct lithium extraction uh, methodology by uh, building a pilot plant and, and testing it and looking at the commercial scalability of it. So this is the path. This will be the future of, of us where we'll be we're well funded and uh, I'm going to hand it over to my to my CEO for a few words. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. As uh, many of you know, Lithium Bank was formed in, in 2019 in the midst of a three-year pullback in the price of lithium. Amidst, um, you know, we looked at that as, as kind of false start to the era of electrification. We were able to pull together a group of very highly regarded industry players and we raised $15 million uh, over the first few years to pursue the consolidation of what we believe is some of Alberta's premier confined Leduc reef structures um, into an exploration uh, portfolio, as Paul mentioned, which was you know over 4 million acres. We have since fully explored our 4 million acre portfolio, and we're now we're rapidly moving towards the development of three of Western Canada's most prospective district scale lithium production uh, opportunities. I'll hand it off to Kevin to walk you through our most recent accomplishments at Boardwalk, as well as our near-term plans to generate shareholder value across our vast portfolio. So with that, KP. Kevin, are you with us? Can you hear yeah. us? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Perfect. One sec. I'm just getting to the right slide here. No okay, so with, with, with what we've um, uh, accomplished with the the property acquisitions, we came up uh, and acquired four, uh, four million acres in province of Alberta and Saskatchewan. Uh, with that exploration that we conducted uh, over the course of acquiring these properties, um, we came up with three flagship projects, uh, Boardwalk, Park Place, and Saskatchewan. Um, so we're going to focus on our, our flagship project, Boardwalk, to start um, because we've finished a PEA very recently that's been out and that's been the hot, to hot topic here. Um, so boardwalk, we call it boardwalk because we think it's the best project on the board, um, not because of a single attribute that the project has, but because of a combination of attributes the project has. Uh, for one, it has uh, immense size, uh, 6.2 million tons of LCE uh, at about a 70 milligram per liter grade, which is a top 10 resource in the world. Um, the next is the, the claim package and the, the tenure. It has a very uncomplicated tenure uh position they're all crown minerals there's no private freehold land in there uh it's 100 percent owned by by lithium bank uh and it just presents a, a simple um path towards development which includes the now uh newly formed directive 090 from the alberta government so not just mineral tenure but the road to permitting on these projects are valuable uh to getting these things to the next level uh, the next is the deliverability of the brine itself. Uh, so with the size and the mineral tenure, you need to be able to bring the brine to surface at large quantities uh, over a long period of time. And we've demonstrated that with our hydrogeological study. 
uh, we can produce over 250,000 cubes per day for 20 years. Uh, and that constitutes about 10% of the whole Hadoop formation. Uh, so you can imagine there's there's a future future trade-off studies and, and expansion studies that we can we can do uh, as we move this project forward. And the other part of the project is uh, the mineral recovery itself. How do you get the mineral, the lithium out of the brine? And that's a key to these brine projects. Uh, the, for the PEA, uh, we've so testing DLE project, DLE companies, uh, Lithium Bank, we've been doing this for about a year and a half. Uh, and we've engaged Hatch Engineering to do this with us. Hatch is a metal, uh, hydrometallurgical metallurgical experts in the field of this. They've been doing feasibility studies on spodumene projects, on geothermal projects, and uh, solar projects. Uh, nobody knows more about the processing and, and chemistry of these things in them. And so we engaged with them to look at several different technology companies. Uh, the one we're using in our PEA uh is uh, the most advanced project the most advanced company we've tested with to date we had very good recoveries under 60 minutes with 93 percent recovery using ion exchange and that takes us to our pea the, the north america's largest lithium hydroxide monohydrate uh project in north america 31,350 tons of lhm uh NPV 2.7 billion with an IRR of 2.21.6. So the economic summary of this project is here. Uh, I'm not going to read all these numbers, uh, but the important parts are the size, the 31,350 tons per year at a lithium price, a selling price of $26,000 per ton. Uh, current market price is 42000 uh, as of last month. Um, it's come down from an $82,000 high. Uh, this is a great price value at 42. We think this is uh, a price that is more, more manageable um, and more, more reasonable over a long period. Uh, so you can see there, there's a high leverage to the upside of this price. Kevin, is there one part in here or maybe a couple parts where you see almost low hanging fruit to even further improve on these numbers when you upgrade, let's say, the economics here? Yeah, exactly. So if you look at the OPEX and the CAPEX, the OPEX is actually quite reasonable. It's about half of what a hard rock mine is at about $6,900 per ton. Uh, the CAPEX being $2.09 billion uh, to build. Now, these numbers, I want you to keep in mind, these numbers are our current numbers, post COVID, you know, new inflationary numbers. Uh, and they're very conservative. They're, they're, they're done using uh, Hatch Engineering. Hatch uses, you know, in-house and, and uh, their, their expertise from, you know, decades of building projects. Uh, and so they don't apply, they're not very liberal with their numbers. They, they apply real world numbers. Um, but that said, these, these numbers um, are a baseline for the project. These aren't, these, these are, this is a, a very good stepping stone for the project to enhance. Uh, we've been working on enhancements as we go. We wanted to draw the line in the sand and say, okay, this is where we're at right now. We know there's several enhancements we can make to this project. Uh, and we're working on those uh, as we speak. Um, but as it stands now, the payback's at four to four and a half years. Um, but the enhancements I'm gonna go through in the next slide, and you'll see how we can improve these numbers um, with things Lithium Bank can do and are doing now um, to make this, uh, you know, make the IRR and the NPV significantly more attractive. Okay, great, thank you. So the first is uh, the government's ITC, the Investment Tax Credit. Uh, the Liberals announced that in their 2023 budget. It's been approved um, and it is going to uh, go through legislation. The details will come out of that. Um, but there's a significant capex uh, savings right off the bat from that. You know, it's in the order of magnitude between you know two and three hundred million dollars uh, cut off the capex uh, from this tax credit incentive. Uh, the next is the DLE technology itself. Um, so there's there's a couple approaches, and and like I said, with working with Hatch, we've always been open to different technologies and testing different technologies. Uh, the first improvement we can make is with Conductive themselves. They have a next generation 
media that is more efficient that we're currently starting our test work with them for that as it's a new media um, and we expect that those numbers uh, and the OPEX using that media uh, would be uh, improved significantly uh, and we can plug those in as we have everything else the same. Uh, the next is you know an alternative DLE um, technology. Uh, there's other there's other ways to extract the lithium. Um, we're testing not just with ion exchange, but um, uh, alternative DLE technologies um, have the ability to, <clears throat> excuse me, use different reagents uh, that can improve the OPEX significantly. Um, when we look at the details of our OPEX, uh, we look at that being about 54% of the entire OPEX. Uh, if we can replace some of those reagents with uh, cheaper ones that work uh, as efficiently, uh, we can reduce the OPEX um, uh, by by a huge amount. Um, you know, approximately three thousand dollars in OPEX off, uh, which constitutes you know close to a million dollars per year Canadian on on the operations that go straight to the EBITDA. That would be a big advancement. Now, would that be done through pilot plant, through switching the type of DLE technology? How, how would you utilize that? So we're, we're doing test work now. Uh, we've done a couple of rounds of test work with this technology. Um, the, the early indications have been very favorable. Uh, we're doing some confirmation and additional testing, a little bit larger scale, uh, something that we could use in a PEA. And uh, when that is complete in the next um, uh, weeks ahead, uh, we'll have those numbers and we can release those numbers. And those will be, yeah, like you said, those will be very significant. That could be a game changer for the project for sure. Yeah, just, just to add to that a little bit, uh, Kev. So just want to make clear on the math. So, uh, you know, a 3000 uh, reduction in OPEX from 6,900 to 3,900 is a hundred million dollars of EBITDA or sorry, it's a hundred million dollars a year. And at the end of the day, you know, our current EBITDA is 586 million US dollars. So that, that's pushing the EBITDA number up towards 700, which is obviously going to have a material impact on the, on the payback period by lowering, lowering the payback period closer to three years, which is, you know, a very attractive number. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. So uh, going down the list, there's, um, you know, there's some mechanical improvements we can make with, uh, with pumps. There's other pump options and other pump developments that could potentially uh, reduce well bore sizes, which would reduce capex and drilling uh, narrower wells um, and speed up and speed up the construction phase, as well as uh, repurposing old oil wells, oil and gas wells. So the project uh, is a self-sufficient project. We're not including any old infrastructure uh, in this CapEx and OpEx. Um, we're proposing to, to drill 100% of our own wells. So we're currently working with a group that can identify which wells are suitable for, for a new life in the, in the, in the brines, in the, lithium brine space. Um, that'll take a bit of time, but uh, not too much time. I think uh, in the coming uh, a month or two, we'll be able to have an assessment of where, uh, which drills are suitable and we can save on, on many, many new holes by using old wells. And as well as uh, certain pipelines that may be available to us and water lines and, and electrical facilities. Uh, the other is uh, geological enhancements. So we're looking to drill two wells uh, in the in the production zone of the of boardwalk. Uh, this will give us a more, I guess, enhanced porosity permeability model. Currently, the the model uses an average, taking into account the higher and the lower uh, productive zones into one average. Obviously, we are going to be producing from the most productive zone. Uh, these have higher permeability and porosity values, uh, and with with that knowledge, we'll be able to uh, you know, be able to use less wells for free injection and uh, less wells for production and obviously savings with OPEX and CAPEX from that. The next is, um, is power. It ties into power. Uh, so we, we did an MOU with ZS2 Technologies. Uh, they're a really neat, neat uh, technology company um, based in Calgary. And they have two parts to their business. And so we partnered with them for both of those parts. One is a, a direct air carbon capture for CO2 emissions. 
Um, the project again, the our, our boardwalk project again uses uh, an in-house uh, power plant. We're building our in the capex as a power plant. Um, we do this because we can control our our power prices. Uh, power prices in Alberta fluctuate quite a bit, uh, and so we will be having a, a, a controlled price on that. And the others we can control our CO two emissions uh, with our own power uh, our power plant. Uh, we, we will do co -gen steam cogeneration and steam in the processing design, which offsets electrical needs. Uh, this gives us a high efficiency rating and keeps us under the radar for carbon tax. And above that, uh, capturing carbon and capturing CO2 uh, actually gives us the ability to sell carbon credits on the project. The other part of the ZS2 technology business, what ties in really well, is they, um, they capture magnesium and calcium from brine. Uh, that they use in their proprietary cement business. Um, so they can offset our injection by 10%. They take 10% of the brine. They'd extract the magnesium and the calcium. They'd sequester, permanently sequester the CO2 emissions for their uh, cement product. Uh, so it's a really neat tie-in that saves us capital, and it also um, uh, controls our CO2 emissions on the project. So, Kevin, these are a lot of potential advancements here, all to help kind of the underlying numbers of the PEA. And it does sound like these are kind of a near term focus for the company. Do you have to go after them one by one or do you solve a lot of these when you have a pilot plant running? Can you take us through the steps or even the time frame to really go after all of these potential enhancements? So we've been working on all these as we go. I mean, with the exception of the government of Canada, that's uh, obviously out of our hands and, and will help us when that comes out. Um, but everything we've been working on as we go, um, you know, the low hanging fruit, I guess, would be uh, the DLE and, and, and getting that new trade off information and, and the new uh, data from the test work. Um, and we can immediately update PEAs from that. Um, and as, as these things provide substantial increases, we can update that PEA um, and show how they affect it. On a timeline, you know, like I said, the DLE test work, you know, weeks away. Um, other things as we go, we'll check them off the list and we'll provide that feedback to the market as we check those things off the list. Okay, perfect. Yeah, a lot of people, that we'll, we'll get to a lot of these questions, but a lot of people are just wondering how you further kind of cut down on costs, make this even smoother, so. We'll get to all those, but everyone keeps sending in your questions. And thanks, Kevin. Continue on. So our, our second flagship project in Alberta is Park Place. It's about 50 kilometers south of Boardwalk. Uh, it's a bit of a sleeping giant, this thing. It has, um, it's taken us about three years to consolidate this asset. It's about 1.57 million acres of, of crown minerals. So it's got similar uncomplicated um, tenure system. Uh, in, in, in Park Place. Uh, our hydrogeological study on this uh, within our claims at this current state uh, showed 77 cubic kilometers of brine. It's the largest brine holding within a single company uh, in North America. Um, so it's a really exciting project. And we've done one sample. We've, we've announced one sample to date uh, earlier this year at 77 milligrams per liter. Uh, historically, that's within the range of 76 to 130 milligrams per liter. Uh, from historical sampling. So we're going to go out and take additional samples to uh, to verify these grades, these historical grades. And when we have those, we're going to put a resource estimate on it. Um, but further to that, and more exciting to that, is the ability to um, bring this project up to the same uh, level playing field as Boardwalk. Um, and we've spent a year and a half uh, working on Boardwalk, working on DLE technology, all those learnings we've done. And uh, we're, we're going to be able to apply to Park Place and bring those and, and bring those up in parallel. Our other district is Saskatchewan. Uh, we have we have three assets in Saskatchewan. These are all crown mineral holdings. It's the largest crown mineral holding from auction than any other company. Uh, it's a really unique set of assets in that um, there's a lot more small players in Saskatchewan and each each claim groupings has has kind of a, a partner, a different company that is doing some work and uh, have their own, you know, single asset companies. Uh, each one of these of these companies um, are working very hard to to 
advance their projects, but the, con the, the consolidated market cap of all those companies is about $140 million, uh, roughly. Um, and as you can see, um, we're, we're focused on Alberta uh, primarily, and we don't see this as giving the company a whole lot of value to our share price at the moment. So going forward with these projects, uh, we expect to spin these projects out to a new co uh, and add shareholder value through um, the new co being the ones financing the Saskatchewan asset uh, and lithium bank shareholders would would retain the upside 50% of the upside on the Saskatchewan assets. Any time uh, frame on those there, guys? Yeah, we're working on that. We're working on that. Uh, a number of opportunities there uh, live as we speak. We expect to have updates uh, on that in the nearer term. You know, one of the important things for us is is that uh, there's a dedicated team on the ground, uh, Saskatchewan based. Um, you know, uh, lots of experience and, and know how in the area. Uh, great understanding of the geology. And uh, yeah, so we're excited about what we're seeing in terms of potential uh, ways to go about maximizing shareholder value there, and, and we'll report back in the very near term. Okay, yeah, fair enough, because there's a lithium market out there, right? You even have in the bottom of the slide a recent sale. So I know people would like to see those in another vehicle, probably. All right, Kevin. Yeah, you know what, Corey, I think we'll end it there. Um, okay. If there's any questions. Guys, tons of questions. So here we go. Let's get on this. I'll even fire up my camera here. Um, some that came in even before this webinar was simply when you think the market would consider this DLE technology to be proven. I guess that's more on you guys than moving through a pilot plant. What main steps do we need to look for as investors to almost see this DLE technology being verified, being proven? Well, there's there's several steps that we can take, but there's also steps that um, other players in the industry are, are taking. Uh, steps we're taking is getting a pilot plant. Uh, we expect to have a pilot plant this summer uh, in Calgary to process our brine in warehouse. Uh, and it's a demonstration plant that is uh, probably larger than most companies will be putting in the field. Uh, so that's a very strong proof of concept. The other side of it is other players, such as a group like Standard Lithium, who is announced they are doing a commercial demonstration plant to produce about 5,000 tons this year alone using ion exchange. So that's a, a, a very strong de-risking of, of DLE itself. Now, when you're in a pilot plant, you talked about potentially different technologies that you could use. Is that when you lock in a technology or are you able to test out a couple of these different technologies when you have your pilot plant running? We've always stayed open to different technologies. Uh, if we're piloting, uh, it's because we feel very strongly that that technology is gonna be a winner, um, but it doesn't prevent us from testing other technologies. Okay. Now, how much will this pilot plant cost generally? Any idea, ballpark numbers? It depends on how you structure it and what the deal is with the DLE. Um, you know, the, most pilot plants can be anywhere between two and ten million dollars, and uh, but you know uh, again it could be done by a lot of ways that can be done. Um, so, but that's typically the cost of it, and it takes it takes time to actually put the uh, the plant together, and then you've got to actually get the brine to the plant or or put the uh, plant on the on the on the well field. So. So, so that's what we're anticipating if all goes well, that we, we can have our pilot plant and in the fall and have results that would be, that would show the commercial, uh, the commerciality, the scalability, um, of the, uh, of that DLE process. Fair enough. And you need to build up this data, right? When you're going through this type of technology, you build up this data at different concentrations of lithium as well to make sure that it's working across the board. Um, in terms of overall resource size here, you, you went through the boardwalk resource. How much of the actual project size, percentage wise of the overall project, does that resource stand on? Uh, at boardwalk? At boardwalk. Um, at boardwalk by volume, the production zone is about 10% of 
the whole board, uh, a whole Leduc reef structure. Now, is there exploration potential outside of that? Are you going to be looking to grow this resource? Yeah, not not in the short term. I think it, we're going to be focusing on getting this thing, uh, the in, the enhancements to the PEA, um, and enhancing all the economics around that. There's definitely room to expand this thing. Uh, you can see that there's room to the north. There's room. There's room. Um, there's a lot more brine in that area that we haven't touched in this production zone. Okay. Then in terms of park place, it said planned resource and PEA H2 of this year. What more work do you need to do to make that time frame stand up? Uh, well, we need to collect those samples. Uh, and when we have those samples, we can do uh, our resource. Um, and then, you know, the beautiful, the beautiful thing about having boardwalk is we'll be able to use the same technology because the chemistry is very similar. The temperatures, the pHs, all those things are very, very similar to boardwalk. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel and reinvent the whole processing design. We can, if we keep it the same scale, we know, we know, um, you know, the equipment sizing and all that would be very, very similar. Uh, so it expedites the PEA very, very, very quickly. Okay. So you know, we would piggyback on the PEA that has just did. Mm -hmm. So all that that fundamental work that we did in the engineering has already been done. Yeah. And, and basically, we're plug and playing in a resource. And you know, if uh, if, if the uh, if park place, uh, if the grades and the resources are, let's say, up there 30 percent higher, well, that will have tremendous impact on the, on the economics of the PEA. The, the key here moving forward, at least near term for investors, what I think they need to understand is it's not about resource growth right now. It's about validating this DLE technology through the pilot plant. And also even improving on some of those PEA numbers simply because you outlined so many potential upgrades there that these numbers should move a lot. Do you guys want to speak to that concept in terms of what investors need to be focused on the big stepping stone here? Sure. I mean, we're, we're doing the technological things that we, you know, in terms of trying to find the most optimum DLE for our brine chemistry. So that, that's good. We have uh, piping, uh, how we get the, the brine fastest and, you know, how we minimize the number of drill wells. So we're looking at those strat strategies, the income tax, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the investment tech, tax credit of 30%. Those actually have huge bearings on it. But if we can actually get our, our investors to say, look, here's the pilot plant. You can come touch it, feel it. Look at the scale of it. Think of it as a modular part of a, like, imagine 10 of these or 50 of these at a different scale, okay? And I think that's what people want to see. I think that's what they want to see in all DLEs throughout, the, throughout all the companies, okay? The resource is there. It's not like lithium is rare. It's getting it out of the ground economically, and it's really a race to production. Try to interest an OME, uh, um, energy uh, oil company that wants to transition into lithium. Here it is a large 30,000 ton a year operation that's sitting in Alberta, okay? Very, you know, in North America, you can drive to it. So that's very appealing, you know, in terms of the developmental curve and the, the risk profile of the project. Hey, to your point about a race to production, Paul, man, we've had a lot of questions come in and people even saying, look, they know it's a long way off. But in the presentation, I believe you indicated 2026 is the potential to have commercial production. Is that reasonable? What, what can you tell us about the runway to actual production here? Well, it's, it's a lot like oil and gas production. I mean, you're drilling wells. And it's the actual production of the DLE, which you'll see the commercial uh, of the building that that front end and the back end, I'm making the, the calcium carbonate or the monohydroxide. They've been building those for years now. So we think that, you know, the permitting will be relatively straightforward. So will it be, is it possible to be, have some form of production? We're not talking about 30,000 tons, but. You know, maybe we could be making 5,000, 10,000 tons a year by the end of 2026 okay, as a ramp up modular approach. 
Okay. Uh, now, in terms of off off takes, potential off takes, at least, uh, people always point into these auto companies that continue to sign deals with larger companies. When do you think a potential off take could even come into Lithium Bank as a company? Um, I mean, off takes are really good, you know, but, you know, most of the uh, depends on your philosophy. If you're building versus if you're selling, uh, if you're trying to sell it to a company. So, you know, we, we don't have to make that choice right now. We, we're at the point where uh, we wouldn't want to obligate our offtake because, you know, if you sell your, your, your production, you're going to have a company like, let's say, if you sold your production to a metal trader uh, and you wanted uh, a Ford, like, let's say, a General Motors wants to buy the company, they're going to say, well, why are we buying the company if we don't own the, 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 the production? Yeah. So I think you've got to be very careful that, you know, what part of the equation you want to be on. Uh, offtakes are important, you know, if they're, you know, depending on the size of it and how much of it. And if you need the money, this is, you know, one type of project where you don't really need to have you know, you're probably talking in the tens of millions of dollars to get to a, a feasibility scale type of production decision. You don't need hundreds of millions of dollars to get there. So you you wouldn't need much. You wouldn't have to obligate your offtake to get to you to that point. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's fair. I think a lot of people are just looking at that initial cap cost of over $2 billion and saying, you know, how does a company fund that? They must need partners. But again, that's down the road for something for you guys. You need yeah. to get this pilot plant up and running. And, and I can give you a real life example where I've actually been through. So I was the CEO of uh, Potash One. And Potash One was a uh, feasibility scale, $4 billion endeavor. Okay. And I managed to sell that project for $454 million, okay? And I also worked on like an arrangement and potentially a, a deal where we would be uh, a small equity owner of the, of the plant. So you're right, it's very difficult for juniors to, to come up with $2 billion, okay? And, and so, you, so you end up trying to sell and you know, so we have lots of strategies and a lot of experience about doing that. Okay, a uh, few questions and that's here. Mine, and, that, then, and that project became a mine, the legacy, the, the Bethuen mine. They, K plus S now has built it. You know, it's spent five and a half billion dollars. So oh, I think a lot happen. of people are hoping for the same outcome here, judging yeah. by the questions that are coming in. Uh, a couple yeah. questions came in regarding the new well that you are planning to drill and if you could potentially use any of the old wells and re-enter down there uh do you guys want to give us more information on the importance i guess of this first well and if you have any other options rather than drilling your own yeah for for the exploration part of, of drilling uh we'll certainly prefer to go down old wells and then re-enter and recomplete the just the leduc section and get a fresh leduc section and save save drilling the top uh you know two thousand meters on that so that's the intention is to save as much cost as probable re-entering old wells okay. on the exploration side, yeah. Um, now, in terms of economics, someone was asking, do the economics still work if you stage it? Say, start out at half or a third stated capacity in the PEA and then expand from there? I'm, we've, I'm done some op we've done some optimization studies. And, you know, frankly, we could do more to see if that's possible. Uh, I think that uh, the, the economy of scale would probably dictate to, 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 to get to a larger scale. And I think it's more attractive. I mean, most people are looking for north of 20,000 ton a year operations. Okay. So now whether we could scale it, we'll probably there is some scalability because different uh the the wells are drilled over time so we we could look at that and see if that's possible it, it depends if we are the builders you know and in, in in my opinion of this would probably be built by someone where they would probably just throw away our feasibility study and say our cost of capital is four percent and we're going to do it this way yeah 
Okay. I mean, the cost of capital for a, for a junior is probably 17, 18%. That's why juniors don't really build much, many because they can't compete against cheap money. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is fair. Um, in terms of updating the PEA, I know it just came out and updating it. Uh, it seems like you don't need to rush into that. But again, it sounds like we're going to get a lot of news on some upgrades or potential benefits that we could see in terms of the numbers. When do you think you might update a PEA? When does that make sense for the company? Well, I mean, we're always testing uh, different DLEs to see how it impacts not on the CapEx, but uh, especially on the OPEX, on the, on, the, on, on the differential between water and reagents. And uh, so if, if we find that from the preliminary work that we've done, that it makes a significant difference and that we find some engineering and some uh, piping distribution systems, then we'll probably elect to actually present one uh, on boardwalk. So, you know, that, and if that happens, it'll probably be, you know, and since we've already done all the bulk of the work, the back end through hats already, it's relatively quick to actually undertake. So if, if those all come through, then I would say that you'd probably see a PEA in July to September timeframe on boardwalk. And then, you know, and then, Park Place, depending how quickly we can we can get the resource up to speed, that will come shortly after. Okay, a uh, couple questions, Ken, regarding if you've had any discussions with AER on brine being discretionary. Uh, any color on this? No, uh, no. Okay, that one came in a couple times. So uh, there you yeah. go. Um, uh, other questions being in terms of, where is it? Uh, sorry, guys. In terms of technology advancements in the battery sector, do any of these affect a lithium company like yours that is looking simply at DLE extraction technologies and you have a defined resource? Well, the, you know, I mean, if there's... If batteries are going to be made of lithium, then they're going to probably need our product. If you know, if batteries are going to be made of sodium or some other metal, then we're out of business. Okay, so but I, in the short term, I don't see lithium batteries going away. Okay, uh, another question on those Saskatchewan projects. Somebody was asking. Why divest those projects? They're, they're, they seem to be um, two to three times the size of these Alberta projects. Just wondering why not keep them within the portfolio and maybe give them some work later on? I, I think, it, you know, there's, I don't think we're trying to divest necessarily, but we're trying to look at the best value for uh, shareholders. I mean, we have like an embarrassment of riches. We have Park Place, we have Boardwalk, we have three substantial properties in Saskatchewan, and we don't have enough bandwidth or dollars to to move them. We're not we're not, uh, we're not uh, Livent or, or Alchem with uh, billions of dollars in our, our purse. So eventually, you've got to pick a horse, okay? And and how you know? And if you look at our share structure, we'd like to you know obviously. You know, we make money by increasing and we have great shareholders by increasing our share price. So if we can actually, you know, get huge value from for Saskatchewan uh, projects and doesn't without dilution, it actually adds value. Then, you know, that's a great thing for for uh, for all shareholders of Lithium Bank. Yeah, just to add to that, you know, to be clear, we're not looking, you know, we'd be the largest shareholder of any NUCO in Saskatchewan, right? So yeah. by virtue of our holdings, um, our, our shareholders would still have maximum exposure to the upside of those companies. And just those, those, that portfolio, which is not larger, by the way, in our Saskatchewan portfolio is round numbers, 360,000 uh, acres versus uh, Park Place alone at 1.5 million. So just to, to put that in perspective, and that's three separate projects in in Saskatchewan, and we're the largest, um, you know, crown lease at least acquired by an auction holder in the entire province, right? So, so just things to keep in mind. 
Yeah, sorry about that. It actually said two to three times the lithium concentration, not size of yep. the land. I just read that incorrectly. Yep. Okay, guys. Well, then, in terms of news flow that we should all be watching out for, because, look, there's clearly a lot of people paying attention. There are a lot of questions that came in, a lot of people hanging around watching this webinar. What are the key news events that we should be watching for, let's say, next three to six months? Well, we're, we're doing a work on a potential uh, DLE work that you'll see. You'll see a uh, potential new PEA uh, drilling and, and park place, drilling and, uh, and boardwalk, maybe potential divestitures or joint ventures, Saskatchewan problems. Uh, lots of catalysts, okay? Lots of catalysts that are all, uh, I think, share value added up very creative to the company okay and something just to layer in there is you know i think there's a misconception that you know it, okay it took lithium bank a little while to get this pea delivered we were supposed to put something out at the end of last year right and now obviously we put this out we have all these enhancements to make um you know i think people look at our, our sort of nearest compares and, and say well you know there's a comparable company uh, in Alberta, they put out a PEA in 20, the fall of 2020 or December of 2020. It took them two and a half years to get to a pilot plant. That is not going to be the case here. So I want people to understand we've been doing all this work in parallel and we're going to be moving. Our, our goal here is to move Boardwalk and Park Place through to pilot this fall. So there's, there's no two and a half year uh, hiatus here uh, where you're just going to watch something trade sideways because it's you're, they're unable to, you know, create additional shareholder value. We're going to rapidly uh, move these projects, create a resource, piggyback um, Park Place on the work of Boardwalk and uh, be able to hopefully deliver those uh, those th those you know, very significant milestones uh, in the coming two quarters. So this is all 2023 uh, work and uh, value to be created. So we're really excited about uh, the outlook for the rest of the year and beyond. Okay, guys, I think that sums it up well. You guys are moving quickly on this, and it is. So you, you need to move quickly because there are companies that are trying to chase what Lithium Bank has already done, and now let's see how the pilot plant functions, what DLE you go with. There's a lot of news still to come that I think will be quite fun to follow along with. So, Rob, Kevin, Paul, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing more insights on that PEA, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar. If you have follow-up questions for the team at Lithium Bank, you can always email me directly. That is fleck at kereport.com. I'll be having the guys back on my show to update us on all the future news. So again, guys, thank you very much for your time today. That was a great call. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, thanks, Mark.